I'm not falling for the devil's tricks. Are you falling for the tricks of the devil? And are you allowing the devil to hinder you in standing and in walking for the Lord? Trick or treat. When I was planning this sermon, I was thinking about Halloween, to be honest with you. I was thinking about the scary movies. I was thinking about how many people, both young and old, love to dress up in cosplay as their favorite fictional or non-fictional character. Then there's the whole trick-or-treat aspect of Halloween, and... I began to think about how kids hope to end up getting the good stuff on Halloween and not end up like one of my favorite cartoon characters, Charlie Brown, who mm-hmm. on his Halloween special that they always show every year would end up getting rocks yeah. in his bag when he was going around trick or treating with his friends. Mm-hmm. I reference Halloween today, not because I feel like Uh, This is a wicked or evil day. I reference Halloween today because I feel like mankind's great adversary is always playing a game of Halloween with us. I believe that he's always playing a game of Halloween with you. The devil always has an offer of a treat. He always has an offer of a treat. But I want you to hear and I want you to know today that the devil's treats always end up being nothing but a trick. That's right. Come on, son. Satan, I want you to understand he's always playing a very dangerous game with you. I want you to understand today that Satan, the devil, is always playing a dangerous game with the lives of all of us, with the lives of mankind and those dangerous games they lead to nothing that is good Mm. they don't lead to a treat i want you to hear today that god is not the author of confusion that's right the lord he makes things plain to all of those who choose to follow him Mm -hmm. and to all of those who would choose to listen to his voice the devil on the other hand He is one that loves to stir up a whole bunch of mess. He loves to cause a great amount of confusion in the hearts of man. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, he's been doing this for a very long time. So we must be very careful in our walk because it is very easy to be fooled by. And it is very easy to fall for the devil's tricks. Yes, sir. Falling for his tricks, I tell you that they can hinder us in Mm -hmm. our journey. They can hinder us in standing up and walking for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Should we choose to fall, if we fall for his tricks, Mm -hmm. they lead to nothing but destruction. So what I want to do today is I want to take a moment here to focus on our great adversary. I want to take a moment today to focus on what motivates him, Mm -hmm. why it is that he chooses to pursue us. I want to take a a moment to focus on the wiles of the devil here today and how we can combat Mm -hmm. the devil's tricks. We'll see in the eighth chapter of John's gospel Mm -hmm. and the 44th verse. Mm -hmm. We'll see that scripture does not attempt to even hide who the devil is and what the devil is all about. We'll see in that scripture that Jesus tells us plainly Mm -hmm. that Satan is a murderer and that he was a murderer from the beginning. Yes, sir. And that the devil does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. In the beginning, I want you to see here, Mm -hmm. we are told in scripture that the devil rebelled against God and that war broke out in heaven, Mm -hmm. which led to his fall and not only his fall, but the fall of the other angels that chose to listen to him, Mm -hmm. that chose to follow him as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the beginning for mankind, Mm -hmm. the devil, he snaked his way into the garden. All right. 
And again, we see him playing a game of Halloween with mankind. Mm -hmm. He deceived man into eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's right. God had told Adam not to eat from that tree That's right. because he would surely die if he had done so. Mm -hmm. But we saw that Satan, he came along the way and he whispered into the ear of Eve. All right. And again, we see that the devil had a trick. He had a deception. He had a lie mm -hmm. that he shared with Eve. He told her that they would not die if they ate from the tree. Really? He told her that they would be like God yes, and that they would know good and evil. Yes, right. You'll see that in the third chapter of Genesis. Come on, come you can just write that down if you want to ever look at it. Come on. We know that Adam and Eve ate from the tree. All right. And we know that when they ate from that tree, that both death and sin entered into our world. Yes, sir. The yes. devil, I want you to note mm -hmm. that he lied and that he deceived Adam and Eve. All right. As we saw, Jesus just told us there in the eighth chapter of John's gospel, the devil is a liar. Yes, sir. And there is absolutely no truth that is in him. Mm -hmm. We'll see Jesus tell us there in the eighth chapter of John's gospel that the devil is the father of lies. Yes, and again, I tell you, he's been doing that for a very long time. He's been doing it since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So do not think for one second that the devil truly cares about you. All right. All right. Don't think for one second that the devil has a treat to offer to you. Come on, son. Yes. It is nothing but a lie. Yes, sir. It is nothing but a trick. Yes. Yes. So why is Satan this way? Mm -hmm. Why is the devil this way? Why does he seek to deceive us? Mm -hmm. Why is he considered mankind's greatest adversary? All right. Let us briefly take a moment to understand his motivation here. All right. Now, there is something that we see Jesus speak of in John's gospel that will give us some insight into Satan's motivation. If you just yeah. turn over to the 12th chapter of John's gospel, mm -hmm. you'll see in the 31st verse that Jesus, he briefly speaks of a upcoming judgment of both the world and then he says the ruler mm -hmm. of this world in the King James version, you'll see the prince yeah. of this world. Mm -hmm. Now, who is this ruler of the world? No. Jesus, I want you to understand, was not speaking about himself. He was not speaking about God there because we'll see him say there in the 31st verse that the ruler of this world mm -hmm. will be cast out, will be thrown out. So who was Jesus speaking of there? All right. I want you to know that he was speaking of Satan. He was mm -hmm. speaking of the devil. Mm -hmm. So somebody will ask the question, well, how can this be the case? <laughs> Isn't God the, the sovereign ruler over everything? How is the devil considered to be the ruler of the world? All right. Mm -hmm. Let's dig deep here. After Satan rebelled against the Lord, Again, scripture tells us that he was cast out, that he was thrown out of heaven. All right. And we are told that he fell to the earth by Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. In the book of Job, we see that the devil even took up home in our world. All right. All right. We see the devil. We see that even though he was thrown out of heaven, he still seemed to have access to heaven mm -hmm. Because we're told in the first chapter of Job that he visited God one day and that he spoke to the Lord one day yeah. and he told God of his, what he was doing. He told God that he was going to and fro in the earth. Yes, sir. So the question was, what is the devil? What was he up to? Mm -hmm. And he's going to and fro in the world. I believe that Peter described it best. When he said in his first letter in the fifth chapter in the eighth verse mm -hmm. said that Satan is like a roaring lion yeah. seeking whom he may devour. Yes, sir. 
Now, the lion, we like to say, is right. the king of the jungle. That's right. <laughs> he is the ruler of the jungle, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We say this because we consider that the lion is the top predator. He's the top of the chain of the jungle. All right. All right. So like the lion, I want you to understand today that the devil is the top predator in our world today. Yeah. He is the, the top predator of the jungle, if you will. And the jungle is our world. He, in other words, rules. He, in other words, runs this jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Now for those that will be moved with fear, of the devil being the ruler of our world. Let us j remember what Jesus just said there in the eighth chapter of John's gospel mm -hmm. said that the ruler of this world is going to be cast out of the world. Yeah. In other words, Jesus was saying that the ruler of this world is going to be defeated. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Satan, the devil is going to be defeated. Yes, sir. Not God. Yes, sir. Now, I want to take a look at how the devil is going to be defeated right. because his defeat has actually already been sealed. <laughs> the devil's defeat actually will come in three stages, but mm -hmm. I'm going to only focus on one of the stages today. Right. I focus on others in a Bible study for you. Okay. All right. The devil's defeat, I tell you again, is already sealed. And we'll see that the first stage of the devil's defeat again, has actually already passed. We'll see this in scripture. Mm -hmm. We'll see his defeat already passing at the cross. Yeah, yeah. At the cross, the devil believed that he would finally defeat, that he would finally destroy the Lord. Mm -hmm. He believed he would do this by killing the Lord's only begotten son. Oh, yeah. Now, I want you to see how hard that the devil had worked to defeat the Lord here by killing his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. The devil, he had schemed and worked his way into the heart of one of Jesus's closest followers, wow. Judas Iscariot. Mm -hmm. And after he had worked his way into Judas's heart, he had got Judas to the point to where Judas betrayed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Satan, he had then worked his heart into, he had worked his way into the hearts of the religious leaders mm -hmm. who did not care much at all for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they finally got the Romans to do their bidding and order the execution mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So this was supposed to be the death knell for the Lord. Yeah. The killing of his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. This was to be Satan's moment. Mm -hmm. This was to be the devil's crowning achievement where he would deal the death blow against God. All right. Yet we know things did not quite go as the devil had planned. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus, he physically died on the cross. All right. But we know that after he died on the cross, Jesus, he went to hell and scripture tells us that he proclaimed victory over the grave in hell, meaning he proclaimed victory over sin. He proclaimed victory over death. Right. He proclaimed victory over the devil as well. Mm -hmm. You see, because of the cross and because of Jesus's resurrection, Jesus, he overcame the devil. He overcame the world. He overcame sin as well. All right. All right. Through Jesus's death and resurrection, scripture shows us that he brought about peace to those that would believe in him, to those that would follow after him. Listen to all of these things that the devil, that the, that Jesus was striking at against Satan, mm -hmm. against the devil, bringing about peace to those that would choose to follow him, to those that would choose to believe in him. Oh, okay. Jesus's death was not the death nail to God as the devil intended it to be. All right. All right. The only thing that the devil managed to do was to reveal that he has absolutely no power 
and no authority. He revealed this to himself. He revealed this to mankind as well. In other words, I want you to understand, though he may be considered the ruler of this world, the devil is a weak ruler with no authority and no power in this world. The devil, he also revealed that God truly is the sovereign God Mm -hmm. over all things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lastly, at the cross, again, we see that Satan got to see that his defeat was truly sealed. So we ask what motivates the devil. Mm -hmm. We ask, why does he pursue us so much? Mm -hmm. He pursues us so much because of his sealed defeat. The devil has already been defeated. He has been defeated by the Lord. He's motivated today to still try to strike against the Lord. He strikes Mm -hmm. against us because we are precious to God. Mm -hmm. After Jesus's death and resurrection, the devil became more bitter. Mm -hmm. He became more angry. He became more upset. He's not someone that was going to be gracious in defeat. He is now driven to drag down with him to the pit as many as he possibly can. He knows that that is his end destination and he wants to bring us down with him. Satan, he is relentlessly motivated in his drive to bring others down with him today. That's all that he has left to do in our world. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, he is that roaring lion in the jungle, the top predator. He's seeking to consume. He's seeking to devour. He's seeking to bring us. He's seeking to bring you down. Yes, sir. So we face today what Paul calls in my key verse there, the wiles of the devil. Again, we see that there in the sixth chapter of Ephesians and the 11th verse. Wiles. So what does that mean? Someone may ask. Well, a wile is a trick or a stratagem intended to ensnare or deceive. Yeah. A wild is a skill in outwitting. Mm-hmm. Again, Paul said we face the wiles of the devil. Yes, so we must understand that the devil is a master strategist. Yeah, yeah. He's a master strategist in the art of deception. Mm-hmm. The devil, we must understand that he is very cunning. Yeah. What this means is that when he does move against us, he will not do so openly. All right. He will not do so to where you could actually see him coming. Yeah. He will do so covertly, mm-hmm. hidden, mm-hmm. veiled when he decides to strike against you. All right. I want you to understand today that when the devil attacks you, There's always a plan to his attacks. Mm -hmm. You see, Satan is like a chess player. Always trying to be a few steps ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So you better believe that the devil has studied you. And I want you to understand that the devil has studied you intensely for the purpose of bringing you down. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we've seen that the lie is one of the devil's most well-known tricks, yeah. but I want you to know today that the devil has more tricks up his sleeves. Mm-hmm. He has more deceptions up his sleeves that you and I, we need to be prepared for well. because if he fools us with one of these tricks, mm-hmm. it can lead to our downfall. So let us look at this. Let us look at some of the tricks. Let us look at some of the wiles of Satan here. Now, for believers, one of his most prominent attacks against us is to twist the word of God. 
that. All right. We All talked right. quite a bit about the word of God last week, didn't we? Mm -hmm. One of his most prominent attacks against you is against the word of God. Right. I want you to understand today that the devil does this in an effort to get the believer to doubt, to question mm -hmm. the word of God. Right. The devil wants to deter you in your standing up for God, in your walk of God. The devil wants you, wants to deter you in learning, mm -hmm. in growing in your wisdom and in your faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. well. The devil desires to do this because the devil wants to tempt you. He wants to tempt the believer to act against the Lord. Right. Just as he did Judas, mm -hmm. the devil desires to get you to betray the Lord. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. In the gospels, we study about the temptation of Jesus mm -hmm. by the devil. And he tempted Jesus through the twisting of the word of God All right. over. I'll use Matthew's gospel here for a reference, but you can find it in the other gospels as well. Mm -hmm. In the fourth chapter, That's right. we'll see in the third and the fourth third verse there that while Jesus was hungry after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, mm -hmm. Satan, he tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread. All right. Yes. Now we'll notice in Jesus's first rebuke of Satan there that Jesus rebuked Satan with the true word of God and told Satan that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's right. That's right. Hmm. After that, I think Satan, he chuckled a little bit. <laughs> And the devil tried again. All right. More tricks up his sleeve. Mm -hmm. He took Jesus up to the pinnacle of the temple that we're yeah, told there. Yeah. And he told Jesus to throw himself from the pinnacle mm -hmm. of the temple. He told Jesus to jump. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> After doing that, we see him twist the word of God again by saying to Jesus that God would give charge over him mm -hmm. to his angels and they, the angels would save Jesus from the fall okay. would save Jesus from killing himself. Yeah. In other words, yeah. Yeah. the devil was trying to get Jesus to test God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How often does the devil try to get you to test God to mm -hmm. see if God will move for you? All right. Again, we'll see there in the fifth and the, through the seventh verse there that Jesus rebuked Satan again with the true word of God. But again, I want you to notice there that the devil was twisting the word of God and tempting Jesus to betray the word of God. Yeah. All right. I tell you today that the devil still uses this very same trick on us, mm -hmm. the believers today. The devil desires for you to doubt the word of God. The devil desires for you to put God to the test so that he can get you to question the Lord's motivations for you. Mm -hmm. How often do you feel that you're testing the Lord to see if God truly loves you? Yeah. That's what the devil was doing to Jesus there. Mm -hmm. He does this because he knows that those who trust in the word will be saved from the pit because they trust in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Again, Jesus told us there in the eighth chapter of John's gospel in the 32nd verse, mm -hmm. he told us that the truth will set us free. Right. The truth being the word of God being set free from the bondage of sin. So the devil's desire for us, mm -hmm. he desires to choke out this truth. He desires to choke out the word of God. He desires to choke it out from man's heart. Mm -hmm. He much rather you remain in the bondage of sin and face God's judgment along with him. Mm -hmm. He much rather you, you face 
living in sin, face the punishment of living in sin rather than be in paradise with the Lord. Again, the devil desires to, to trick you, Mm -hmm. to drag you down with him to further deceive mankind, to stay in the bondage of sin. Mm -hmm. Another of the devil's tricks that is shown to us in scripture is that the devil will cunningly present himself as something that he is not. Mm -hmm. You see, Satan, he loves to, to cosplay. Mm -hmm. Satan, in other words, he loves to dress up in costume too. He does this with the intent of trying to get you to trust him. Mm -hmm. He does this with the intent of trying to get close to you. Mm -hmm. For those who are of the flock of Christ, we are told again in the gospels in the seventh chapter of Matthew of of Mark. I'm sorry. We, We are shown there that Satan will dress himself in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Imagine many of us have heard this a time of two. Mm-hmm. Let us remember that Jesus warned that we have to be aware of false teachers mm-hmm. who inwardly are ravenous wolves, right. but will wear, Jesus said, sheep's clothing. Yeah. The yeah. devil loves putting on sheep's clothing <laughs> because the devil wants to get next to you. Yeah. Aren't you of the flock of Christ? Aren't you one of Christ's sheep? Mm -hmm. You see, sheep will follow each other. Sheep will follow other sheep. And so the devil will cunningly work his way into your inner circle. Mm -hmm. Again, with the intent of getting you to trust him so that you will follow him as well. The devil again will cunningly work his way into your life so that he can pull you away from the good shepherd that we saw is Jesus Christ. He wants to pull you away from God. So I tell you today, I warn you today that you have to watch carefully Mm -hmm. those who try to work their way into your inner circle. You have to watch carefully those that are near you, because again, I tell you today, the devil wants to get close to you. The devil wants to get by you. The devil wants to be near to you. To those who are not of the faith, Mm -hmm. again, scripture shows us that the devil will get into costume. The devil loves playing dress up. In second Corinthians and the 11th chapter in the 14th verse, Paul wrote about how the devil will transform and how the devil will present himself to people as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Why does he do this? The devil does this again to earn trust, Mm -hmm. to get people to follow after him. Yeah, yeah. You see, the devil, he wants to minister and he wants to present a doctrine to people. Mm-hmm. He wants to present his doctrine to all of those that will listen to him, that will give him ear, that will turn their attention to him. He wants to present this doctrine to all of those that would choose to follow him. Oh, yeah. Now, you'll find that the devil's doctrine, it plays, it tugs at the ears of man. Mm-hmm. And we saw last week that man has itching ears for something. <laughs> like how I tie it all together, don't you? All right. The devil, he seeks to feed the ears of man where the Lord seeks to feed the hearts of man. Mm-hmm. So we find that the devil's doctrine is often a worldly doctrine. We find that it is often worldly driven and it scratches and it soothes the itching ears. Mm -hmm. It is a doctrine that offers gold. It offers riches. It offers treasures to all of those who will listen to all of those who will follow. Again, the devil, 
He has an offer of treats mm -hmm. to mankind. Mm -hmm. The devil, he desires to blind the hearts of man from the truth. The truth again being the word of God. The truth again being the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. The truth again being a sound doctrine. The devil, he wants to blind man with riches of this world from the truth of the eternal riches that is in the Lord's heavenly kingdom. I don't know if you hear me here today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He does this because he knows exactly where he is leading them to. All right. He does this because he knows where he is going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He knows that his end destination is not heaven. Mm -hmm. And he does not want anybody to be going to heaven with God. <laughs> All right. He does not want anybody to have that happiness yeah. because he himself is not happy. Mm -hmm. I told you that the devil is bitter. That the devil is angry. That the devil is upset. He doesn't want anybody to be happy. And people think that the devil actually has treats for them. It's tricks all along. The devil will lead you to nothing but destruction. Now there's one more trick that I want to point out here about the old devil that he'll use that is up his sleeve here. There are many more others. Again, I share them in a Bible study with you. In Matthew's gospel, in the 24th chapter, the 24th verse, right. Jesus, he spoke of the latter times and how false Christ and false prophets would rise. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, he said of those false Christ and those false prophets, he said that they would show great signs and great wonders. Mm -hmm. They would show signs. They would show wonders. Mm -hmm. These false Christ and these false prophets, they would do this with the intent of deceiving people into following them because they seem to have some kind of power. They can do many great things. Mm -hmm. They are fooling people that they can do. Now, the question one may ask is, well, where do they get this power? Who would lead them into doing such a thing? Who is capable of leading them in doing such a thing? Oh. Well, in his second letter to the Thessalonians, mm -hmm. in the second chapter, eighth through the tenth verse. I told you I got some Bible turning for you. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote of uh, the times of the great apostasy that is to come in the last days. And in those days of the great apostasy, Paul wrote of the coming of the lawless one mm -hmm. and that he will come to the world according to the working of Satan. All right. According to the working of Satan, Paul said. And so we'll see that Paul began to speak of the workings of Satan. Paul wrote that the lawless one would come with power, with signs, with lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deceptions, Paul said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want you to understand that Paul wrote that the lawless one was essentially coming in the image of the devil yeah. in the image of Satan doing the same workings of the devil doing the same workings of Satan. Mm -hmm. I tell you today, beware of this great deception from Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan can give you signs. He can give you wonders. All right. Satan can give you those magical feelings that you want to feel mm -hmm. that you believe is a message from God. Right. Satan can give you those whispering words in your ears that you believe are words from God. Right. I want you to know today that these are false signs, mm -hmm. that these are false wonders. These are false feelings. These are false words. These are deceptions. These are cunning deceptions. Right. These are cunning lies that the devil will present to anybody, especially those who are a child of God. 
good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You see, the devil is fully capable of scratching the ears mm -hmm. of your soul All right. and deceiving you in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Falling for these signs will lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. So someone is asking, someone is thinking it right now, preacher, how do I not fall for these tricks? All right. How do I not fall for the devil's tricks? How do I not fall for the devil's deceptions? Mm -hmm. How do I combat Satan as I go along the way? Let us take a look here. We'll see here that in order for us to not fall for the devil's tricks, we'll see back over in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. We'll see that Paul tell us that we ought to dress appropriately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paul tells us in the sixth chapter of Ephesians and the 11th verse, that was my key verse. Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Yes, sir. He tells us to put on the whole armor of God for a reason, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He tells us to put on the whole armor of God so that we can do what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. So that we can do what? Stand. 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 Okay, I'm just, I'm just checking. Don't close up them Bibles on me. <laughs> All right. So that we can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right on. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God is what Paul said there. Yes, sir. I tell you today, because the devil is relentlessly pursuing after you. Mm -hmm. Because the devil is relentlessly pursuing to drag all of us down with him. All right. I believe that we ought to be wearing the whole armor of God in season and out of season. All right. Watch it now. Watch it now. Come on. I believe that you ought to dress appropriately. Yeah. And the appropriate dress mm -hmm. for one who is a child of God, one who genuinely believes in Jesus Christ, one who follows him, the appropriate dress for the sheep is the whole armor of God. And I believe that we ought to be wearing this armor in season and out of season. Okay. What I mean by that is that we ought to be wearing the whole armor of God at all. Yes, sir. All right. At all times. Not some of the times. Not part time. But all the time. Yeah. I don't know if you hear me here today. Right. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about today. Are you wearing the whole armor yeah. of God today? Yeah. I know. Now we'll see that Paul tells us what to put on there. Mm -hmm. But I specifically want to point to the 17th verse. All right. We will see that Paul directs us to take the helmet of salvation, all he right. said. All right. Yes. Paul tells us to take the helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. And then, then you'll see Paul say there to take the sword of the spirit, All right. which we did see Paul says is the word of who God. is the word of who God. the word of who God. take the spirit Mm -hmm. Take the sword of the spirit, which Paul said is the word of God. Paul tells us to take this into battle against the wiles of yeah. the devil. Yes, sir. The word of God. Oh, yes. The very thing it seems that Satan seems to try to attack most. Right. The word of God. Paul tells us. Carry it with you. Yes, sir. Paul tells us to have it on us. I said today that we ought to have it on us in season and out of season. We ought to have it on us at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us remember that the word of God, Jesus said, sets us free. 
Mm -hmm. the, the word of God is what sets us free. Oh, yeah. When we have the true word of God, we are better able to combat the devil's wills. Mm -hmm. We are able to better combat his deceptions. Oh, yeah. We are better able to combat his lies as well. Mm -hmm. So I tell you, we ought to diligently mm -hmm. study scripture. Right. We ought to diligently study Jesus's teachings. We ought to diligently study his preachings. We ought to do so in season. We ought to do so out of season right. for when the devil tries to come along the way and twist the word of God on us. Right. We can then come back him the same way that Jesus did. We can then rebuke him with the true word of God and tell the devil that he ain't nothing but a liar. Tell the devil that he don't have no treat for us. Tell the devil that he don't have no blessing for us. Tell the devil that we belong to God, that God is the one who has the blessings for us. I don't know if you hear me here today. Yes, sir. As we saw last week, I told you that the Lord works in us. All right. And his works in us are his word coming to life. Yes, sir. It makes his word living is what I said last week. Mm -hmm. I tell you here today that we should live by the word of God mm -hmm. and that we should do so in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. We should live by the word of God at all times. Yeah. Do not let the devil twist mm -hmm. the works that the Lord has done for you. Mm -hmm. Don't let him try to tempt you mm -hmm. to see if God loves you. Mm -hmm. When you live by the word of God, you already know that God loves you because you remember all that God has done for you. Remember that all that God has, has brought you through. Don't let the devil try to twist whether or not God loves you because you know that God loves you because of the work that he has done in you. I want you to understand today that we ought to carry the word of God with us at all times because it not only bats back at the devil's tricks, but the word of God is a saving word and it will save us from the devil's lies. It will save us from the devil's deceptions. It will save us from his tricks. As Paul said, it will save us from the wiles of the devil. We then see in scripture that we have one more weapon to combat the devil mm -hmm. and his tricks. Oh. Our biggest weapon against the devil's tricks, Paul tells us there in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. I believe it was the 18th verse that it is prayer. Oh. Yeah. In Luke's gospel, we'll see that Jesus said we ought to pray so that we are counted worthy to escape the evil that will come to pass. Mm -hmm. I want you to recall that when Jesus taught us to pray, that he said we should pray not to be led into temptation, mm -hmm. but to be delivered from all evil. Mm -hmm. This prayer was to the Lord. So we should pray to God that we not be led into temptation and that we should be delivered from all evil by the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And we ought to pray diligently not to fall for the devil's tricks mm -hmm. of wickedness. Mm -hmm. I believe James summed it up best. I believe that he said it best when it came to dealing with Satan. James said that we should submit ourselves to the Lord and that we should resist mm -hmm. the devil. Mm -hmm. When we do these things, James said that the devil will flee from us. Oh, yeah. the devil. You see, lions, though they are the king of the jungle, they don't like messing with prey that is difficult to catch. They don't like messing with prey that will put up a fight, that will resist. The devil, I want you to understand, does not want anything to do with prey that will put up a fight. He doesn't want anything to do with prey that will resist. The devil doesn't want to put up with anything that will be difficult to catch and to consume. Mm -hmm. So the goal for us is to resist the devil Amen. by the word of God. Mm -hmm. The goal for us is to live on eternally. Mm -hmm. We live on eternally by trusting in the word of God. Mm -hmm. None of the devil's tricks can take you away from the Lord. 
should you choose to hold on to his loving, his saving word today. Amen. 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 Amen.